just a really versatile character, although they can be very, very challenging to master. Proper defect play really, really requires a good understanding of all the things the character can do so that you're able to figure out which one is correct on any given run. There's the potential for a free elite here with Niao's Lament, but it's only potential. And far from a guarantee, you'd have to get three events to be combats, pretty unlikely. Never forget Conscious Current, that was, that was a really tough fight. We ended up with a command for that, I can't remember. I've never done any kind of professional broadcasting or voiceover work. That would be really cool to do someday. I think a rare colors card could be quite potent. Who's our ranked boss here? Slime boss, yeah, definitely. Especially against slime boss, we could take the bomb and be pretty happy with it. But I also really like Apotheosis or Hand of Greed as starting cards, and a master strategy wouldn't be bad either. Looks like a two elite act one way or the other. Can't take out the burning elite if I... Well, I mean, I can, but... We shouldn't. If I remove all gold, I won't want to go to the store. But rare colors cards are pretty fun. I think boss swap is also highly valuable here. Boss swap great on defect in general and gets better the more flexible your early game pathing becomes. Since we can avoid early elites, it becomes a bit better so that we can adapt to an empty cage or uh, inserter start. <laughs> But I'm going to take the Rare Colors card. I really like Rare Colors cards, and I really think that Apotheosis is an excellent start. Upgrading all of our cards for the rest of combat. Upgraded strikes and defends are particularly good, and notably on defect, you'll immediately gain the two energy back because Zap and Dual Cast both become free. Give me that. I am a big fan of Transmutation as a card too, but I, I don't think this is the time or the place. Apotheosis, especially with uh, Seek or a Bottle Lightning, lets us just have a very large deck of cards. Peru asks, what character is the easiest to make an infinite combo with? Each character has different avenues to infinites, but I'm going to go ahead and think that Watcher is probably the best at getting to an infinite. This is because Watcher's starting deck is the strongest with the Wrath Stance from Eruption. Uh, Watcher can skip cards more aggressively than any of the other characters, and that allows you to build an infinite combo out of a select few pieces with relative ease while not is immediately pressured to add cards to the deck so that you don't die to your first elite combat or something. The simplest in infinites using Watcher involve the card Rushdown to draw cards when you enter Wrath Stance, and repeatedly gaining energy from entering and leaving Calm. But you can also get some pretty potent infinite combos with discard synergies on the silent, and if you find the sundial relic on ironclad and get some exhaust, you can do some fun stuff there too. So I do want to upgrade one, like, I mean, we want, we want to upgrade the apotheosis before I go elite fighting. Let's start here. It might technically be better not to play the Apotheosis here. There's a 1 in 4... Actually, a 1 in... 50% uh, chance the dual cast kills one of them. Yeah, I'm gonna play the... Just play the dual cast here. Okay, we did not. See. Uh, I should have played the Epo. But it only costs me one hit point versus playing the Apotheosis. Strength Potion first is Grand. Good sequence of Cool Headed Recursion. Early boot sequence, kind of interesting. Yeah, card draw, card draw is definitely nice when Zap and Dual Cast are free. Getting Frost Orbs in play is pretty good too. I almost always want a Cool Headed later in my defect runs, so I'll happily pick one up now. Zippity zoopity. There we go. 
Look at all the party uses. 9 plus 9 plus 3 equals dead. I like Bullseye quite a bit. With the upgrade, it'll be 11 damage and 3 turns of lock on, making our lightning orbs do more damage when they strike. 50% more, so 1 more from the passive and 4 more from the evokes. Plus more if we get focus. Barrage could be okay, especially with the Strength Potion. Since we have Cool Headed to fill up the Orb slots and we didn't lose our Strutting thing, it's not bad. Or a White Noise for random power, a little unreliable. Not great against the knob. I'll take this Bullseye. Give us some more immediate damage. Good, perfect draws. And if focus potions are really good early find, ooh -hoo -hoo, especially paired with either a ball lightning or a doom and gloom. Both of these are powerful attacks. Both of them channel an orb. Both are going to combo with a bullseye. I like it. Doom and gloom does AOE. Do I watch any sports or competitive games? I used to be a big fan of competitive StarCraft 2, uh, but it's been quite a lot, quite a few years now. These days, I don't really watch anything competitive. Probably the two best damage cards early for Defect. Other things that I would put in consideration for that category would be Sunder, Rip and Tear, Hyper Beam. I don't want to count rares. That seems unfair. Big fan of the Protoss, personally, Jamie Mars. Always rooting for the Protoss players. Or against the Zerg player, usually. <laughs> Streamline's not bad, either. And pretty solid in the early game. I'm gonna opt for Ball Lightning. I'm not for Ball Lightning this time. Not sure I can articulate why. Uh, hello. Remlanius. Many Grimlanius. Hmm. Do I need to use a potion here? That's my main question. Feels like it'll make a big difference. Let's see what Kulhada draws. Okay, a strike. Yeah, I think I strength potion and kill a fat gremlin here. Take eight. But then the fight is in much better shape. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay, we're fine. Definitely not the worst combo of gremlins we could have gotten. Ultimately, only 8 damage taken, although I did have to use a potion. One of my favorite block cards. Equilibrium lets us retain cards from one turn to the next. Compiled River also good for a card draw with many orbs. Didn't take the Doom and Gloom, though. I really like EQ. I'm going to grab the first one that I'm seeing here. Gives me good incentive to pick up an energy generating card. Do I go into one more combat now? I'd really like to get a Apotheosis upgraded. Let's just take an event. No. No thanks, Mr. Serpent. No thanks. Alright, elite number one is... Lagavulin, definitely the best elite for us. Doubly so with this opening draw. Beautiful. But 
does doubt upgrade to anxiety. I think we get to keep our focus potion here. Yeah. Really smooth fight. Letting us get a Juzu bracelet guaranteeing that question mark rooms don't contain combats. Not necessarily a good thing. Skim versus hologram. Now that's a tough choice. Don't think I want script. Skim helps us find the apotheosis once we get an energy generating card, and trust me, we're going to take one. Um, the skim makes us able to play a lot of cards in one turn. Meanwhile, hologram is excellent for just really controlling what happens. And with the zero cost cards to fetch from the discard pile, it's pretty good too. I think normally I would lean slightly towards hollow. I'm going to try the skim here though. I want to see what, what a skim can do. I can even make it a skim plus to help us find the apotheosis more easily. I think I'm going to do. Meal ticket's great, healing us 15 at stores. We'll going be going to those in Act 2. Like, heck yeah, if you're uh, if you're playing Aspire speedrun of any, any kind, then Juzu Bracelet is enormous. Just enormous. Hmm. Double defend ball lightning. I'm considering using the focus potion here. This is definitely a good fight for it. So is Slime Boss, though. You know? Hmm. I'm gonna opt for it. Yeah! Orange Mango, thank you so much for the full year of support. Hard to believe a year has gone by already, but here we are. We are. Potion back as well as the anchor, giving us 10 block on turn one. Option for another ball lightning here. Oh, one, one. Thank you so much for 17 months. Thanks for the alert. I'm gonna go double ball lightning here, since we have the apotheosis. Feels like because I used the focus potion, we've got lots of health. This should be enough to beat slime boss with, so... Normally I advocate for banana if you have enough health missing. I think today I'll take the donut. And I'll take one more event. Trade some health away for another relic. The bird-faced urn, healing us whenever we play a power card. And now I'll try to get... Some more potion. Beam Cell makes our physical attacks hit quite a bit harder. Also good for removing artifacts so that the bullseye can do its dirty work. Why ball lightning over Tempest? Just so we have more direct damage, the Tempest is going to be, you know, randomly targeted damage, but I want these Ball Lightnings so that I can choose which enemy I'm damaging. Very important against stuff like Gremlins or the Three Slavers of Act 2. Yeah, and more, it's ultimately more damage per energy. 
That's a good way to put it. With this fifth potion, I think we'll be fine against Slime Boss. This deck is very good. Like, really good. Strength potion, too. Capacitor, bird face turn. I like this FTL a lot for front loading our damage. FTL definitely makes Slime Boss, no problem. The capacitor is future proofing, getting our orb slottage down. We'll need more orb generation to go with it, but that's okay. And the fact that it heals us too when we play it, I think, is going to sell me on it. A strength potion for the slime boss. I guess we could also just, uh, you know, just rest because we have an apotheosis. And then I don't have to use a potion? Okay. I like it. I am indeed using a standing desk of heart, oak heart monster. Something I adapted quite recently and I really like it so far. Very much so. Just barely splits. It's okay. With a fully upgraded deck, I'm not too worried here. Who do I want to kill? I don't want to be frail. You die. That split though. Foolish. one that's going to be attacking me next turn. Joke's on me, they're all going to be attacking me next turn. Let's see, do we need to use the block potion? Won't be frail next turn. We do 19, yeah? That's perfect. DM, did you hear that the slime boss is releasing his own brand of soft drink? It's going to be lemon slime flavored. GG. Okay, we managed to keep both potions intact. We're offered an all for one multicast and meteor strike. Hmm. Really hoping we'd see maybe a biased cognition or a creative AI. All for one currently just returns the zap, the dual cast, and the beam cell. I guess all for one could be okay here. Um, the multicast and the meteor strike don't do anything at all. Can't play meteor strike. Let's take the all for one. We do get offered a Sneko. I was wondering. The All for One is quite good with a Sneko Eye, too. Sneko Eye would draw two additional cards each turn, but make us confused. We'd also take a nuclear battery, starting with a Plasma Orb, which is fine. Or remove two cards with the Empty Cage, which would make us draw Apotheosis a lot quicker. Would make the all through one a bit more reliable. 
This is a decent empty cage, but we'll need an energy generating card for it to be really good. Tempted by the Sneko here. The Sneko will make the Apotheosis a bit less consistent, as sometimes we'll draw it at like two or three cost. Gonna make the all for one wonky. Encourages us to pick up big bonk cards from here on out. With good sustain, good money, lots of reason to go to shops, I do like this Sneko Eye quite a bit. I do it. Let's take the Sneko Eye. I do have a little bit of sadness over not taking Meteor Strike, but we can take the next one we see, if there is another one. Hmm. Interesting layout. These look like killable elites. Maybe these two as well. But I'd have to get past this one. I like going to a shop before I fight any elites. Any monster train in mind? We might do some uh, for the second half of broadcast today. Speaking of things that I do have in mind, tomorrow we're going to be playing Outer Wilds, checking out the uh, the new DLC for that, Echoes of the Eye. We did play Outer Wilds originally on stream a couple months ago. Really enjoy the uh, the experience. And I hear that the DLC is a real treat, so I'm very much looking forward to it. I don't think my win rate would go up much if you swapped the order of Boss Relic and Card Choice Value Town, but I do think that... Um, if you could pick them both at the same time, it would be a very big advantage to the player. Being able to see Sneko Eye and, you know, a three-cost card at the same time is so powerful. Or being able to see, you know, Runic Pyramid plus Limit Break or Reaper or something. Yeah, and that's... I've, I've heard from a couple sources now, uh, Fry Hervis, the b basic message has been... I won't tell you anything about what's in the DLC, but you should know that it was really good. <laughs> That's it. That's all I've heard. That's all I've heard. How many events do I want? Go with two. Do the easy pool fights. And take some advantage. I'm gonna have some turns like this sometimes. Sad, sad turns. But then some turns will be like this. You know? And they'll be good, good turns. Really good turns. So close, dang it. Only those had been slightly cheaper. Can't quite kill. But I'll block potion to thumbs up. Just these upgraded ball lightnings do so much damage. Definitely not too early for one. We'll pick it up and start increasing its block over time. If we're allowed to. Sometimes we won't be. That's okay too. I can ground a bird if I energy potion. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. A sketchy start to the act, but I'm not at all surprised. I said for a long time that Sneko usually asks a blood price when you first pick it up. You're gonna have some nasty turns, but that's okay. Just trust that it's gonna get better. Because it will. Oh, we upgrade the algorithm too? That's a good reason to include it here. Um, zap. 
precisely this zone. Graded compile. It's not bad. It's not what we're looking for. Giant book? Oh, yes. I will read your giant book. Costs 21 hit points to read the book, but we get the enchilada, giving us a random power card on turn one that costs zero. That'll be two hit points per time we play it. So in a mere 10 combats, we'll get all the health back. And I'll pay money for a relic too. The Mercury Hourglass returns. Three damage per turn to all enemies. Definitely helpful here. Do I take another combat on? They're pretty good events so far. Is the book you get random? Yes, there are three different books and it's just a one in three chance for each. The Enchiridion, the Necronomicon, and the Nilri's Codex. Definitely random. Do you heal also up to four hit points in a combat? Book is my favorite. <clears throat> I like the Necronomicon when it works. Being able to duplicate your biggest, hardest hitting attacks is pretty cool. I may have made a terrible mistake by coming here. Nope, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Oh no. Disaster. Glacier plus bears a card, fills up the orb slots, gives massive block. Don't care if it's random cost. Hologram was real good too, but I'm taking that glacier. And I'm definitely not going to fight an elite right now. Stop! And trade money for gold going into a shop shortly. I actually think that's a pretty good idea. Um yeah, otherwise we could immediately lose a relic if we get a bad face too. Sambo Steel, thank you so much for 10 months. A full metric year. <laughs> well, that's an easy blue key. That's an easy blue key for me. Right before the store. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, now we can pick up a hologram. You can also take two fruit juices. That's kind of interesting. Runic capacitor gives us additional orb slots. Card remove gets rid of a stinker. My only regret is that I'm not allowed to buy all of those things. I think this hologram might be more valuable than a card remove. You know? Oh. Let's do it. I 
and a blood vial, healing us two more per combat. All right, the healing is starting to add up. Little bit here, little bit there. It's definitely not bad. we'd like more ways to get orb slots. We'd also like ways to get focus, of course. Darn. That's uncomfortable, but acceptable. Other option is hollow equilibrium. Expensive snack of eye. Can't quite kill you, right? Fifteen, sixteen, thirteen, thirteen. short or something. Yeah, we have to kill the gremlins then. Okay, we got good healing, so I'm not too concerned here. Whew. We do get a preserved insect, making future elites easier asunder. Finally, a good, good card with Sneko Eye. Very hard hitting, and if it kills an enemy, we gain three energy back, regardless of what we originally spent on it. Perfect. Thinking about making that an upgrade so that it's better on turn one. Let's do that. What do you Thank you so much for that gifted sub to Yuli Heart. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Yuzi Yuli. This feels like a good time for a swift potion. It does. Yeah. Zero cost all for one to go with our nepping. Easy. Easy peasy. Fluctuation EM, thank you so much for 22 months. Happy October. You too. Data disc to give us focus. It's all coming together. And a doom and gloom for more orb generation. As well as being a two cost AOE card with Sneko Eye. Here we go. I think we now have what we need. <clears throat> Do I feel the need to heal before champ. Question is whether we rest, upgrade, or recall. I'm considering recall, truthfully. 
We'll have 34 health on turn one from Blood Vile and Bird Face turn. And we're going to set up a lot of orb slots. Those upgrades really don't matter that much. Since we have no potions, I'll just choose to rest, I think. Okay, I'm gonna deep rag. Good. I'm gonna try to upgrade this. Let's get two dark orbs cooking. I guess Mr. Champ Man. The rest will be frost here. Beautiful. Need to push these dark orbs to the front here. Ideally, without putting Jam below half HP. The recast dual cast, huh? DD 153. Should be good enough. Yep. GG. GG. Definitely like an Electro to give us some powerful AoE as well as fill up the orb slots. Heals us for two. Bopper could be a really good block solution. Or a Core Surge can block the first debuff to us, potentially focus down from Bias Cognition, which we could get on turn one with our um, Incaridian. I have pretty good blocks between the Algo and the Glaciers with Focus. Let's grab the Electro here. Especially since we have Data Disk inherently. And I'm quite happy with a Cursed Key for my energy. Prefer that over the Runic Dome. Hey, Steinikin. Yes, indeed. A new microphone. Rocking the Shure MV7 here. Could also take a bunch of stuff. 50 gold, 5 max HP, a card reward, a random upgrade, you name it. But is it more valuable than one energy per turn? Probably not with a Sneko Eye. Sneko loves energy. What caused the Dark Orb to deal so much damage there? Bullseye. This lock-on status effect causes orbs to do 50% more damage. So that's what happened there. I actually don't think that I noticed that there was a little Donu silhouette in the middle of this art until literally right now. How have I not seen that? That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I thought it was just like a circle. That's really cute. Really cute. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? 
For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. It's time to go elite bopping. We've got preserved insect. We've got meal ticket, question mark. Yeah, and I want to remove a card. Probably I'm going to buy the shop relic though. Uh, right, Zubidor? It, it actually, there was a time when that's exactly what Lock-On did do. Is uh, make orbs target that enemy, but that's no longer the case. Oh my. Oh, one, though. Get the algorithm. I'm gonna miss it. Did that to myself. No! Barrage? Yeah, I'll take one barrage. So many orb slots in this deck. Ah. Definitely want another hologram. Toolbox could be pretty good. But I'm probably going to go hologram card remove. Logan the Bard, thank you so much for the 11 months. Don't always tell dad jokes, but when you do, he laughs. Very nice. Yeah, if I was going to take a relic, I would take toolbox, but I'm really happy with losing a strike and adding another hologram here. Very pleased overall. Reflection. It's ridiculous. Oof. Steep card cost, man. Doom Gloom. A bit of a tempting aggregate, but I'm good without it. And agree. Tempted by magnetisms are interesting too. And agree could make us some cash, but we have enough of big attacks now. I don't think I really want to add more deck from here. I've always wanted a relic, uh, to see a relic conscious current that says something along the effect of, if you play no skills during your turn, gain one strength. I think that'd be a pretty cool relic. This is kind of what Shuriken does. But essentially a counterpart to Art of War. Whereas Art of War doesn't want you to play attacks, I want there to be a relic that wants you to not play skills. Alright, let's skip all that. That's what I decided ultimately. I did think about those panaceas. That's a decent option.
That's all good. Could get two more hit points by playing Electro. Give myself a faint chance. Good with Sekawai. I know power is this combat. That's kind of an interesting condition. Gets back hologram. So I can go hologram, doom and gloom, all for one. Strike, do a cast, doom and gloom, hologram, doom and gloom, center. Four dark orbs in play. My hand again next turn could be disaster. Let's find out. Watch. If we play three or fewer cards during our turn, we'll get to draw three more next turn. Very, very big. Very, very big. A darkness card could help us scale the dark orbs a little bit better. Vision could give us a lot of card draw and energy gain. I think I want any of them, though. for next turn to kill. Turn one, Voln's okay. Upgraded Barrage. I think the one that we have is fine. Feels like our damage is mostly where it wants to be. Gonna skip this treasure chest, although it is a big chest. 
Containing a rare or uncommon relic and potentially a lot of money? All right, I'm gonna fall for it. We get a shame and a tungsten rod. Whenever we lose hit points, lose one fewer. Okay. Shame will make me frail occasionally, but I don't think that's a big deal. with static discharge too. Polar Pain, thank you so much for 22 months. Cozy love and support. Chair may be gone, but I'm still here. to die now. Thank you. Second Sunder. Hunting. Tempting, tempting. I think I'll skip. Fight the bosses with a curse in my deck. Maybe. Do I go to this rest site? Yes. Okay, transient could be a bit of a problem for us. Go. This enemy has to. requires you to do constant block and damage each turn in order to avoid taking significant damage yourself. I think that works. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Wait, seven? Shoot. Seven. So we don't get an infinite combo there that kills transient, but. 
don't get much of all. Much of anything at all, actually. Transform a card, turning it into a different card. If we transform the shame curse, we'll just get a different curse. So we should transform strike. Turning it into a self-repair. Okay. I think we can fight one last elite then. Finally, an echo form off of the thingamadoodle here. The whatchamacallit. Don't forget to stop at three for pocket watch. Oh god. Yay! Go play the glacier over the apotheosis. Should have doubled this. But I'm okay with how that turn turned out. Gotta remember the echo form. Double the self repair at minimum here. Seek for apotheosis, upgrade hologram and algorithm. That's pretty sweet. I keep the current potions. Upgrade the seek. That's huge. Seek fetches a card from the draw pile at its current cost, meaning we can bypass the random costitude of the Sneko Eye. Which is very nice. Doing your first here. You. you take a bit of damage, unfortunately. Is nothing important, so let's go Electro here. Yes! Good! What's in the draw pile that is zero cost? We can use Seek to fetch cards at zero cost so that we can return them with the all for one. So 
Give me this dual cast and the cool headed, please. Cards are returning in the in the order played. So the barrage did not return because we didn't have one more space in hand for it. It was the last card in, in the queue to be returned. Ugh. That's an ugly hand one, man. What a sender's bane apotheosis? Zap apotheosis. Play the capacitor. even worse. Crap. Um... Power potion would not be a good idea. Can't kill either of them. Actually, wait, can I? I can play all the attacks. That's 28. 38. Oh, no, that is enough. Okay, we kill one of them. Okay, we're here. We're fine. Life is good. Thanks, Rod helps a lot here. It's gotta get the glacier down. It's gotta get the glacier down. Sketchy. Definitely looking sketchy. Pocket watch draw. We're going to be frail for this attack. We really needed uh, a draw 10 here. Fight another turn.
So close. Blappity blappity. Thing soon. This would be a good turn to do it because I could play both of these powers. Get back Electro, get back Beam Cell, get back Ball. Does that keep me alive? But didn't I play the self repair earlier? During phase one, it would have given the Awakened One two points of strength for playing a power, meaning the boss would attack for more damage every single turn, ruining us in the process. It would be death. Fourteen blocks short. Currently. Each evoke is three. We get two from Electro. Okay, we'll make it. We will make it. This also gives me a chance of drawing more cards. scary numbers. Hopefully I can kill on this turn. Hologram gets all for one, all for one, fetches back one, two, three, four cards. Yes. Should be plenty. Right. Yeah, we'll be plenty. Good fight. Call a rip, but not for me. GG. Two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You charge your bonk to its maximum. Dealing 21, 32 damage, the heart squirms and bleeds, but ultimately... The random card costs are not enough. Hopefully just gonna... Actually, we have a meal ticket, right? Yes, so we should upgrade. Probably upgrade a hologram so I don't have to exhaust it to play it the first time. Upgrade on electro or capacitor could help too. Happy flower for more energy. Bomb is kind of good. Card removal is good. I'm one off from Happy Flower card remove, but I could go Toy Ornithopter card remove. Definitely appreciate Toy Ornithopter card remove. I do want to remove Shame pretty badly. Yes, I do. I'll 
take five healing whenever we use a potion. Let's see here. Seek plus, huh? Apo Electro could be a really good way to get started here. We can even beam cell and bullseye on one of them. Get an upgraded static discharge in play. Let's see what are the costs of that. Seek costs two, electro costs two. Can I all for one as well? Yes. Seek, Apo, Electro, Beam Cell, Bullseye, Static Discharge, all for one, Beam Cell, Bullseye. Could actually make them both vulnerable to lightning orbs. For two turns. Or I could really focus on killing one of them. I should focus on the spear in that case. I think. Damage. Let's just try to kill the spear immediately. Should have done that in a different order. Should have been bullseye beam cell, all for one. Oh. We do just prevent that damage outright. Focus on the healing process. Almost all health back. Boot thingy here to block for 14 on turn two. Biased cognition here to give us a ton of focus. Wow. That's um, very helpful. That's how I'm going to describe that. Very, very helpful. And I like the Gambler's Brew, I think, more than I like the Blessing of the Forge. Since we have an apotheosis in the deck. Okay, zero cost hologram is a huge deal here. But this is unfortunately not the opening draw I wanted to see. I'm gonna gamble everything except that zero cost hologram. I will play Hello World. I think Hello World's pretty good against the heart. We can get back the capacitor and the bias cog with the all for one. Power Potion first. I'll Power Potion when I have Apotheosis in hand. Not before. Now I Power Potion. That's 
going to be a winner. Okay, great start. Do not want to seek for all for one. Do want to seek for two cost worth of cards. So just hold around the capacitor. Electro and Ascender's Bane is not bad, actually. Stopping here is also a thing so that we can draw a 10. I'm going to choose to fill up the lightning slots. Uh, the orb slots with lightning, excuse me. The lightning slots. Drone running pyramid. Did not want to do that Is there still a zero cost hologram in the discard? Yes. Five. I would need five spots in hand three to actually get it, though. Or I need to use the hologram. I might be able to do something funky here. This is as high. Uh, no, no, we have bias cog. Okay. I'm gonna say this better not be as high as we can scale. Double the equilibrium. That's what I'm learning. That was a mistake, though. Got a head echo form. Classic, right? Hmm. So how do we bail from here? We duplicate the bias cog. That's how.
Most damage I can do is probably double Doom and Bloom. remembering that we have Echo Form down. Play a bunch of stuff. Cold Snap, Strike, Slimed. I think I'm just going to play the Slimed. Draw 10 again. Turn for duplicated dual cast. Mm. We're really gonna need the bias god to come in clutch really shortly here. be plus 10 focus. We'll start losing two focus per turn, but realistically, we gotta win it like three turns here. As Beat of Death now becomes three. Rebound the bullseye. Hey, Lilas the Boy, we just got the standing disc set up a few days ago, so it's brand new, pretty much. And I really like it. Okay, focus primarily now on dealing damage. Strike. Capped the damage there, and full blocks. Got a block 6x15 with reduced focus here, not that easy to do. 90 incoming, currently 27x2 block in hand, with no frost orbs available. It's gonna look like a double equilibrium for me. There's no way to kill this turn, just have to survive. Can I put the old chair in the merch store? You know, that's just crazy enough to work. Please don't murder me, thank you. Hey hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. That's up for now.